Hey folks, welcome back to part two of my super simple, easy DIY solar generator setup. We're in the garage instead of the back patio like I showed you in part one because it gets way too hot back there and some of this equipment I couldn't keep out of the sun and it was just baking, it was getting way too hot. So to keep everything safe, I've moved it into my garage, what still remains over 100 degrees in here during the day here in Texas. And I also had an issue with my big bodega cooler. So we are going to be using this Iceco VL45 as the test subject. And this thing pulls around 80 to 90 watts at startup on max mode. So it's not quite as powerful as the bodega, but it's still, it's still the second biggest cooler that I have. But let me show you the setup here. So my battery is sitting at 14.6 volts now, so I'm not inputting any type of solar. So this thing is fully topped off. I've got the 2000 watt inverter here. I've got this cooler hooked up on the AC side to a little watt meter that is completely cleared of all its data. So when this battery runs dry, I'll be able to plug in that watt meter and see the runtime, the watt hours it used, all the good stuff once this thing dies. But I'm gonna hook everything up and I'm gonna show you guys the, the little solar panels I have out in the driveway. I just have to preface this by saying, guys, this is not the absolute perfect setup with the solar panels because I'm gonna have to kind of move them around during the day. And that's kind of typical though because you're never gonna get perfect solar conditions. So hopefully this will kind of give you an idea of how long that you'll be able to run one of these little mini batteries off of a little 200 watt solar panel array. So, Let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in. Okay, it's kind of hard with one hand. Get that inverter cut on. Make sure that the cooler is running. Let's turn it to max. Okay, so we are on max. I'm going to set the cooler down to, let's keep it at 38 degrees. Now, let me show you folks the temperature inside this cooler because it is not cold. 91 degrees. So, we're not starting off with a cool cooler. Let me go show you the setup of the solar panels. So here I just got my two 100 watt solar panels. They are hooked up in series with a 10 gauge 20 foot cord that's kind of stringing through my shop right here. But they're eventually terminating into the MPPT right here. So let's take a look at the app here. And right now I'm inputting 101 watts, 106 watts. But that battery was fully topped off, so I'm probably not getting full solar right now until that battery gets down a little bit. But guys, right now it is Sunday at, drop my phone, 10.05 a.m. So I'm going to come check back periodically throughout the week and to kind of give you guys an update on how that battery's doing and the eventual runtime that I'm able to get off of it running this pretty big cooler. So stay tuned. Hey folks, day two here on this little solar setup testing that I'm doing. And you can hopefully see right now that my battery's at 13.5 volts. And the cooler is still sitting, of course, at 38 degrees. But let's go ahead and test that with the thermometer gun. Well, that actually says 34.3 degrees, but we'll call it close enough. Now, this might take a while. If I get to over five days, I think I'm gonna call it quits, but I did order some parallel branch connectors that I'm going to try to hook up these solar panels in parallel uh, tomorrow instead of series like they are right now. Now with those solar panels, the way that they're set up and the shadow of my house, I start to lose sun at around 4 p.m. So I get around, let's say six to seven hours worth of decent solar off of those solar panels. But I did wanna show you the amount of power that those solar panels are putting into the system right now. So per the app on the lead time MPPT, I'm getting around 118 watts. So 
I mean, we're still going strong now. Again, it's only day one, a little over 24 hours. So we'll check back in tomorrow and see how we're doing. What's up, folks? We are on day three now of this little solar station setup test with the ISCO cooler and all the lead time components. Um, we're still sitting at 13.4 volts. So again, I think this might uh, this might take quite a while. Now, I did hook up my solar panels in parallel this morning because I got a couple of branch connectors, and so far I haven't seen a huge difference. I'm pulling 110 watts right now. I know that's kind of blurry, but you'll have to trust me. 110 watts. And the main reason I put them in parallel is because I get a lot of weird shadows out in the driveway during the day. And when they're hooked up in parallel, it doesn't affect the, the output quite as much if one of the solar panels gets some shade on it versus if they're in series, which is why I hooked them up in parallel. Now let's check the temperature of the actual cooler. It is still running. Thermostat on the side showing 38 degrees. And that's pretty close, 37.9. So cooler is still running. Now also what you might note is that there's nothing in this cooler. So the cooler is set on max mode. There's nothing in it, which would actually help if I had that cooler filled up with stuff, it would actually be more efficient, but I kind of wanted to, to make this as hard as possible for this setup and to see how long we can get off of this one tiny little 100 amp hour battery. So it is 11 a.m. So I think we'll easily be able to get at least five days off of this thing, but yeah, guys, so far we're doing good. Solar panels are baking. So this is kind of getting monotonous, but uh, yeah, I will check back in tomorrow at around noon, 24 hours later, see where that battery's taking us to. Folks, we're on day four and my battery is actually at 13.3 now. When I came out, it was at 13.4. Oh, there we go. So we're hovering around 13.3, 13.4, which is basically where we were at yesterday. So this thing is still running strong. My inverter actually kicked on, which is the first time I've heard the fans actually running on this thing. And it might just have to do with the fact, you know, it's been turned on for four days and it is extremely hot in this garage. But that inverter is definitely uh, must be warm in there. But folks, I'm just going to keep doing this for probably a couple more days and then I'm going to call it quits because it looks like um, we're going to get at least five or five to seven days off of this. And the cool thing that I'm going to be able to show you guys when we're done is this MPPT, the app on it, shows me the accumulated watts that I was able to produce every day. So when I do call this little test done, I'm going to show you folks what I was able to get every day in terms of watts put into that battery from those two 100 watt solar panels outside. But for day four, we're still sitting at 13.4 volts on the battery and the cooler is obviously still on and we'll do one more temperature check just to make sure everyone is staying honest here thirty five point eight degrees so basically i'm kind of coming to the conclusion of two things this little 100 amp hour battery can power a little 45 quart fridge for a pretty long while and the fact that this ice cold cooler might just be really really efficient probably a little bit of both but day four and we are not even touching 13.0 volts or below so we'll check back in here tomorrow well hey gang for the fifth time in this video it is 11 13 a.m on thursday so we again have been going strong for about five days and my battery voltage is still sitting at 13.3 and i swear it changes every time i say this there we go now we're at 13.3 and it just kind of went down to 13.2 it's going back and forth so we're losing just a hair off of this battery you know um cooler let's check it
So we're actually sitting at 43 degrees now, which is a little bit higher than the 38 degrees I have it set at. The compressor is not running, so it'll probably kick on here in a little bit to bring that temperature down a little bit. Um, but let's see what kind of wattage we're pulling from those two solar panels sitting out there. And it looks like around 100 watts. So I'm kind of surprised that I'm not getting more power off of these two solar panels. Again, they're hooked up in parallel now. It is extremely hazy outside, so that could have a lot of effect on the amount of power that I'm able to get out of those two solar panels. Um, but right now only 100 watts. I think the most that I've seen so far is around 130 watts off of those two panels. But there's so much that goes into play with trying to get wattage out of solar panels, haze, temperature, clouds, the way you have them angled. It's very finicky, but as of right now, I'm putting in 100 watts to this battery and we are going on day five. And I think I might call this thing quits tomorrow because I've got other videos to make, but this has gone on much longer than I ever anticipated. Now, tomorrow when I sit you down and kind of go over everything, I'm gonna show you the app from the MPPT controller and go over with you daily how many watts I was able to accumulate every day being put into that battery. And then we're gonna take a look at my watt meter that I have connected here on the inverter and try to determine a run complete full runtime and see if we can get an amount of watt hours that that battery or that inverter actually used to power that cooler. So we'll check in tomorrow and we'll probably call it quits then. So, okay, we'll see you then. Day six folks and uh oh, we are done. So it doesn't look like it lasted through the sixth day. Now, yesterday I left here at around three o'clock because I left on a camping trip. And this morning, I just got back about an hour ago. So I did not put solar panels out from about three o'clock yesterday until now, and we are dead. But I'm gonna sit you down on the table and I'm gonna go through how many watts we were able to pull every day. And then I'm gonna pull this watt meter off here and see how many watts this setup actually used, if that stuff's accurate. but. Let's go over here to the table and look at some numbers. Okay, so looking at my watt meter here, this whole setup from the time that I plugged it in until the time that it shut down used 2,898 watts worth of power to keep that cooler running. And it looks like the, the, low, the lowest wattage that that cooler ever used was two and a half watts. And the highest that it ever used, which was kind of surprising to me, was 79 and a half watts. So that cooler is actually a little bit more efficient than what I thought that it would be. But let's say on average that this whole setup took around 3000 watts to run. Now I'm gonna pull up my app for that MPPT charge controller. Okay, so you can see here from the historical data, this thing was technically running for around seven days. I plugged this in just to test everything out. So it's counting for seven days instead of six, but regardless, I was able to get 2,631 watt hours pushed into that battery from those two 100 watt solar panels. So that's really not terrible and considering the fact that I did not have the optimum setup, I didn't angle these probably exactly perfectly, I think that's not too bad off of 200 watts running for about six days. So moral of the story is folks, it's not hard to keep one of these systems running or to even build one. It's very, very super simple. And it doesn't take up a lot of space if you have like a chest freezer or whatever it is in your garage and you have the ability to put a couple of solar panels outside. You know, it's free electricity after you buy the, the products, of course, but uh, this was a fun test. I think it was interesting. Helped me uh, realize exactly what's really needed if you want to keep something like a big refrigerator running, which uses a lot more watts than that cooler. But anyway, folks, that's my little test for this DIY solar system setup. Till next time, see you soon.